Oh, I've done so much this time. Oh, I've poured so many things with resin. I ordered these molds on AliExpress, and in my previous video, I have already shown you some of them. So today we are going to pour resin in them. Also, in my last video, I showed you three super cool pigments, but in fact, I had bought much more of them. You know what I mean, right? We will make crystals. I also received this unicorn mold, and I immediately decided to try it. I protect my working surface and take up the resin. As I am going to color the resin, its transparency is not that important, so I take the resin for decor. As usual, I mix up the resin in the required ratio written on the packaging. By the way, look, if you mix the resin in such plastic cups using a stick, don't forget to do it thoroughly in these deepenings at the bottom. Otherwise, the resin might not be mixed well with the hardener and it will spoil your work. This happened to me several times. And then I pour resin into the disposable plastic cups to color it. I break coffee sticks in two, because I don't need them to be that long. And if you break them in two, you get twice as many sticks. I have different dyes. There is an ordinary transparent sea foam green and such duochrome dyes. To add some tenderness into the composition, I wanted to use some white color, but at that moment the white dye was out of stock, so I took my favorite acrylic paint as in good old times. I add this most magical color into one of the cups. But the mother of pearl dyes are not such an easy matter. First, you need to stir them really well in the bottle, and only after that add them in resin. Because if you haven't used such dye in a while, its pearl pigment might sink down to the bottom, which is absolutely okay, as we only need to stir the dye well to get it up from the bottom. When all the colors are mixed into the resin, I leave it for 30 minutes so the air bubbles could get out. After that, you can pour resin into molds. I add all the desired colors and then just a little slightly stir them. We only need to blend the bonds of the layers between the colors. By the way, as my resin is still pretty liquid, the neighboring colors will blend with each other. As a result, we will get a smooth gradient. They will sort of color each other. Having filled all the molds, I moved on to the little unicorn and gradually started filling it with different colors. But I still had a lot of resin, I couldn't just throw this precious material away. Apart from everything else, I bought one more mold for crystals, which is just like the one I showed you in the previous video about rings and earrings. However, this time I found the transparent mold, which will help me to see, at least approximately, how much of each color I added and what's going on inside the mold, as I don't want to work completely blindly. In two days we can see what the result we have achieved. At that moment I decided to pour resin into one more new mold, because I prepared too much resin. So not to waste it, I made up my mind to test this mold as well. 
It was the first time I had bought a mold with a bail hole, and it turned out to be pretty handy. In case you're interested, the links to all the goods I use I always leave in the description. I tried to make a swirl as in the previous video, but you can't see it at all from the front, unfortunately, so the owner of this pendant will have this little secret. Let's put it like the concentrated secret magical power inside. What is peculiar about these crystals is that from far they look like they have almost the same color, but at the same time they are completely different and inside they have unbelievable play of color. Next goes the unicorn. I used to be pretty skeptical about brooches, but this time I realized that I want to put it on my sweater. But as it was just a try, I didn't completely fill it with resin, so it has these uneven edges. But we can fix it. I decided to cover the backside with white acrylic paint to make it less transparent, so on the front the unicorn would become a little brighter. Then I even decided to sign it. It actually was the first time I wanted to put my name on my work. Now we have only one thing to do, we need to attach the brooch base and make a thin coat of resin to cover the paint. Before taking the pendants out, I decided to attach these studs with bead caps. To the drops I attached these clamping bales. I think it looks pretty neat. Next I take the pendants out. Taking them out was super painful. I tried unsticking them from molds using a toothpick and it left some marks on pendants and I'm afraid it might damage the mold. There are two pendants with such white blots, this might be the cloths of acrylic paint, but it's just fine, the rest of the pendants are perfect. I'm so delighted with the colors, their gradients and play of color are stunning. Now I have a question, how would you call this collection? Because, well, it's too tender and the colors are so sweet, so we can't call it a cosmic collection. I won't tell you what comes to my mind, so it doesn't interfere in your ideas, but I'm not so good at giving names to things, that's why I give you an opportunity to make up a name for this collection. I hope this video was interesting and useful for you. The links to all the materials are in the description, as always. And I love you this much! Bye!